Next Curve. Hey everyone, welcome to Next Curve's Rethink webcast. I'm Leonard Lee, executive analyst of Next Curve. I don't know why I always giggle when I do the intro, Roy. It, <laughs> people must think I'm crazy. <laughs> yeah, that should be like a recording by now, right? It should be yeah. Well, I, should, I should hire somebody to do it with like a, a deep, you know, Hollywood intro voice, you know? Yeah. Uh, oh, I'm uh, poor. Yeah. Okay. All right. Let me get through this. All right. <laughs> I'll introduce you. Now, I have a fellow analyst friend of mine, Roy Chua of Avid Thing, joining me to talk about Fuse 2023, which I think was the first one, right, Roy? No, second one. Oh, second, second one. Okay. See, I'm out of it, which uh, took place a couple of weeks ago. I think it was a couple of weeks ago. It might have been. It was a couple of weeks week. ago. It seems like an ancient. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I you know, what time is meaningless to me now? <sighs> it's, yeah. No, it's too many shows. We have too many. Shows. We have way too many shows. I mean, I know. I can't remember which one came first, right? We had the DTW in Copenhagen, then we had yeah. the Fields. Then, then yeah. just this week, this OCP summit in San Jose, right? And oh and yeah, it, yeah, 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 yeah. You just got I, I saw that um, on LinkedIn that you were there. Uh, yeah. But anyways, the fuse the fuse thing was in uh, Madrid, Spain, right? And I it really wanted Madrid, to go there. Yeah. No, it's nice. Madrid's nice. I mean, fuse is nice, uh, of course, but but Madrid was nice too. So yeah, yeah. So Roy, welcome back. It's Thank you. Fun, man. Always a pleasure, Leonard. <laughs> yeah, it's always great having you on. Um, and it's gr- it's good to catch up because we haven't spoken in a very long time. And yeah, um, yeah. And, and you know what I want to do is I want I want to pick your brain. I want I want to you know I wasn't able to make fuse for uh, yeah. I just had so many conflicts. Wanted mm-hmm. to get some of your takes and have you share that with my next curve audience. And then anything that you wanted to know about 5G Americas, you can just, you know. Yeah, I, I, I should have gone. I couldn't make it, unfortunately. But yeah. but yeah, no, I thought that would be great as well to see what you, you saw there with those folks. And unfortunately, yeah. they all end up conflict thing right so it becomes a little messy at some point but. yeah 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 so why don't we get into it so um um fuse it's yeah. uh it, it's uh put on by tip right put on by tip the telecom infra project which originally was a spin out that was started by meta but yeah. uh it involves all the major uh telcos you know like vodafone yeah. um telefonica and so on and so forth and and obviously, this is the second year. Um, this year, yeah. Meta was still there um, and not as big a presence as before, which was the intention. I mean, I think they wanted it to go off and sort of grow up and be on its own. And uh, yeah. kudos to the TIP team for yeah. a successful event that with 1,200 people um, that oh, showed up in no, person. No. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it was, a, it was a decent audience. And I mean, look, the topic's pretty esoteric, right? The disaggregation, open <laughs> infrastructure for telecom, right? This is this is not like you talked about it. That's what everyone's talking about. You know, yeah. this is not like oh open my God. AI chat GPT. Although obviously, yeah. Yeah. well, you know, well, someone's gonna come up with the open RAN plus Gen AI like friggin' there high is thing. I can tell you that you know it's like is. a. Yeah, nightmarish uh, fusion of the two things. But um, anyways, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but no, I, yeah, I mean, it, it, it's esoteric. You know, you're right. It is it is esoteric. And I think those of us who are in the industry who are kind of steeped in this stuff uh, might lose that perspective. It's like, you know, quite honestly, in, in certain in many circles, uh, this, this is just stuff that doesn't that is not easily digestible you know no it's not this is not this is not like salesforce right or or crm or stuff that people are familiar with and can all get in on but this is this is i mean number one there's there's only you know i would say according to the tip there's about 600 800 telcos that probably care about this aggregation and sort of open infrastructure, yeah. right? Yeah. So yeah. It's limited. We're not talking about, you know, the tens of thousands or hundreds of thousands or millions of enterprises all the all the world over. It's yeah. a very select group of people. Small. Number one. Yeah. Yeah. Very small. Yeah. Number two, it's it's a disaggregation and infrastructure, right, in the telco. Yeah. So so for twelve hundred people to show up in Madrid yeah. to talk about that, that's pretty good, yeah. I think. 
Right. So yeah, no, I was, I was quite happy uh, at the outcome and, and obviously it was, it was a good crowd and I uh, had a good, obviously we had good conversations and good presentations, yeah, yeah. but what I would say is, you know, with, with, uh, with tip, it's always about open and disaggregation and the community yeah, coming yeah. together to drive open standards um, and to drive things like open RAN, for instance, or open optical or open LAN, which includes yeah. open Wi-Fi and open switching. Yeah. And, yeah. and that was all, you know, on stage going on. Um, so I, I thought that was interesting. Um, what was interesting as well, as, as you well know, with open RAN, um, the holdouts historically have been the, the three incumbents, right? Yeah. Namely Nokia, which sort of yielded and started participating early on. Yeah. Ericsson, who said earlier this year that it was started participating and made a larger commitment and they actually, you know, beamed themselves into to to fuse to talk about it, which created more controversy, yeah. but I think it's positive. Yeah. Um and then we also I mean and Huawei I don't think has any incentive to 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 participate yet at this point in time, right? Yeah. So yeah. Um, but yeah, no, it was all uh, it was all good. And I think one of the big announcements, or at least what made news, was you know uh, Iago, um, yeah, uh, Santiago Tenorio uh, from Vodafone, and he was saying, "Look, you know, we are committed. We're on our open RAN roadmap. Uh, we're on track. And by the way, we're going to issue an RFQ, a request for quotation, right. for." All 170,000 mobile sites based on open RAN specs, right? So that was yeah. like big news, significant news. Yeah. So he's basically saying, look, if you want to play, you got to talk some level of open RAN, right? Sure. So, yeah. 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 Um, right. Which means probably a lot of cloud RAN and, um, you know, whatever level of uh, openness or open, uh, That's right. open interface yeah. adoption that makes That's sense. Correct. Yeah, That's yeah. Correct. It's not clear, right? He didn't tell explicitly sure. which specifications, but he said the word open ran. And you're right. I mean, there's and then everyone be, got excited. Yeah. yeah you know, there's <laughs> going to be some level of virtualization, some yeah. level of cloud, and there's going to be yeah. some open interfaces, right? Where? And that's up to, you know, Yago and team to decide or figure out. Right. But at right. least that says, look, one of the big yeah. players out there is putting a stake in the ground and say, I do yeah. care about open RAN and so should you. Right. So I think that's, that's good. Oh, that's, that's great. Okay. Uh, and, uh, you know, I was about to ask you, yeah. What did he mean by open RAN? Because um, I know that there was a, a, oh, was a while back, this is back mm -hmm. when everyone started talking about open RAN, ORAN Alliance, X, Y, Z. And uh, ironically, Erickson put out a paper. Uh, this must've been about three years ago. Um, to help clarify the language, the nomenclature, right? And what is open versus uh, open RAN versus VRAN versus cloud RAN versus, um, you know, um, ORAN, right? That's right? And O dash RAN, <laughs> yeah, no, <laughs> right? I mean, no, look, it, it, you're absolutely right. I mean, in our one of our open RAN uh, papers, one of the first things that we had to do was clarify nomenclature, right? All the variation yeah. of open RAN, O RAN, O RAN. Right. Right. Um, but I think fundamentally, I think what we're talking about, generally speaking nowadays, is that some some level on, of, conf of compliance with the O RAN Alliance standards and the standard, yeah. the, the standard definitions, some level of compliance in there and an open front hall so that your radio units or remote radio units can work with your OCU central unit and distributed yeah. unit. I think that's the concept anyhow. And so I think that's part of the first step, which is you can buy people's radios and connect it to the DU of your choice, which would probably be the intention. But obviously, yeah. jokes abound at, <laughs> at Fuse as well, you know, between the analysts. And as analysts, we tend to be a little bit more cynical. It's like, yeah, you can buy, you can buy open RAN, but you're going to buy it from one vendor. Right? So, so what's the yeah, point? I, I, but you know, it's like, um, I mean, I, I, I mentioned this now. It's like going on almost three years, and it was on an interview with uh, Chris Pearson of Five G Americas, who you know, and that was like about the time when everyone was getting really excited about. Open RAN, and you know we had Tarek uh, Amin, uh, yes. uh, uh, formerly of 
um, yeah. of uh, Rakuten uh, Mobile, yep. and then subsequently Rakuten Symphony, and then now yep. apparently uh, CEO over at uh, Saudi Aramco Rampo Digital. Digital. That's yeah, <laughs> it's like, right. wow. Anyway, you know, back then, you know, when everyone was getting excited, you know, Chris asked me, so what do you think about Open RAN and mm -hmm. ORAN? It's like, you know, it, it's basically a, a architectural choice mm -hmm. uh, by the operators. And so this whole multi-vendor, um, single vendor argument, I think is, this is, that, that's a concern of the, the vendors. But at the end of the day, like, what Vodafone is stating, mm -hmm. um, that is the more important thing. And if you have more uh, operators coming into the fold saying, or coming to the table and saying, look, we're going to adopt uh, open principles, that's fine, but that's gonna mean a lot of different things. Mm -hmm. It's gonna be very specific to the operator. So when I was at 5G America, we had a chance to talk to um, uh, Adam, uh, his last name escapes me, he can, you know, he can, you know, punch me when he sees me next time. I'm sure he, he's a really great guy. He's a VP of networks uh, at AT and T, and we had a chance to. Well, he was in one of the roundtables, and he was talking about their open ran or open ran journey, what their roadmap right. looks like. And you know what? This stuff is going to take a long time, and they, especially for the brownfield, they really have to deal with a very heterogeneous portfolio of stuff it right is. oh it's true it's, it's and, not easy absolutely yeah and so and when you look at the demand profile um for open things or open ranish kind of stuff it's all going to be dependent on these roadmaps that the operators have you know that, that's correct no you're absolutely right and then uh, the conversations we've had with the telcos generally speaking a lot of the deployments that are out there already the 5g nrs that were out there already are you know from the incumbents right and and obviously you know samsung now gets to play in there as well and we had nc yeah. time and Fujitsu. so so yes i think the answer is um a lot of those are already deployed um mm -hmm. and with the capital spend dropping it's not likely that you'll have a lot of public large macro you know um open RAN 5G deployments, at least on sure. that. And so the thought is that maybe private wireless will see a little bit of that, right? Maybe the next build out, we'll see more of that. Maybe some of the developing countries are a little behind, you know, yeah. may benefit from open RAN. And so I think that's part of what we're looking at, like Reliance Geo in India, certainly, uh, you know, which is where Tarek spent some time originally. Yeah, um, yeah. Culture shows as well, which is, you know, they may be able to deploy open RAN and get the cost savings and and the benefits from that. But you're absolutely right. I think it's it's it, it's not that easy. There is no magic integration source that just shows up and all of a sudden, you know, you can get reintegration uh, magically free. And so there is a cost to open RAN. It is not always cheaper depending on the, the complexity of the rollout and and we'll see what happens. But yeah. I do also see that there, it's allowed new players, right? So the tier ones obviously are there, but what I call sometimes tier one and a half, right? The Samsungs have shown up and now yeah. there's more competition. And some of the smaller players uh, are able to play as well. Um, I'm not, I'm still not sure how it's all going to shake out um, with the the SMO, right? The And then the RIC, right? The RAN Intelligence Controller. Yeah which is supposed to open up the ecosystem. I'm not quite sure how it's going to shake out, but yeah. I do see some small players in the space that are able to come in, bring very specific expertise for optimization um, into the marketplace potentially. Well, again, right? So yeah, um, yeah. Right. Yeah, I think that's putting the, you know, the cart before the horse. I mean, it's the same challenge with uh, that, uh, uh, what is it? Network slicing speak had, you know, it's all dependent on uh, network and technology maturity, right? right. Future maturity. That's correct. That's yeah. correct. And, and, That's and, correct. and so, um, you know, okay. So, Hey, we'll inject that point of view into the discourse. So anyone who's watching this, you're going to pick up on something that you're going to, you should be caring about. Um, but um, no, I, 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 I totally, uh, you know, I totally hear you. And, you know, here's the thing. 
Uh, you, you mentioned Samsung quite a bit. I talk to them uh, probably mm -hmm. um, yeah. quite regularly as you do. Yep. But one of the things that I, I do always tell them is like, yeah, one of the reasons why you guys are, uh, uh, you know, kind of, you know, there's the whole squid game thing that I always talk about, right? That you, <laughs> you haven't fallen off the bridge in the early mm -hmm. rounds is because you've narrowed, you narrow your focus on who you're partnering with. You yep. focused on integrations mm -hmm. and you've worked out the commercials with your partners so that you can provide a competitive mm -hmm. offering. Um, and then you can start to make some inroads as they have into uh, Brownfield Networks. But interestingly, they don't, they call themselves ORAN compliant, right? But um, the thing is, is in order to be competitive, just do what it takes to, to make it work for you. And I think one of the things that has really undermined the Open RAN movement especially the vent on the vendor side is, um, uh, you know, not doing what Rakuten did, which was just do it. Don't wait for the standards to gel, um, deal with the gaps, fill them, and then find an, a, um, a network of partners that you're going to work with to just, you know, put that thing into a live That's environment. Right. Yeah. And I think, you know, you, you're absolutely right. Tarek was driven more by trying to create a cloud-based architecture, a cloud-based yes. interface, a cloud-based infrastructure. And he ended up with the architecture that he had, regardless of open RAN or RAN. You know, he was going after the cost savings, the agility of the cloud right. infrastructure, the scalability and automation. And he did that. And that was yeah. successful. And so I think... It's, it's important to start with understanding what you're going after from a business principle, from a business benefit standpoint, the architecture should follow that. It shouldn't be, you're right. It shouldn't be, let's go for compliance with a this, this standard, which may be artificial, yeah. and then realize later on that that doesn't support the business. That, that That's no point, right? Right, that, right, right, no right, point. right. Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. Agree with you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, yeah. You, hey, you mentioned... Um, you mentioned private networks. So what was the talk there? I mean, what were some of the key yeah. bullet points, you know, the, th the things that kind of surfaced up to the top for you? Yeah, so I think private networks is another one of those topics like Open RAN that shows up across all these shows, right? Um, whether it was yeah. EW or Fuse or OCP, and I'm sure 5G Americas, I'm sure Chris and the oh, team, yeah. Yeah. I'm sure they talk a lot about private wireless as well, right? Um, yeah, yeah. Well, no, they they had a they had a couple of sessions. Um, I don't think they really went all bonkers about it, but uh, the no, I don't are think curious about it. I mean, I think people are understanding that the, the sort of hype curve, like like just like you know 5G is that yes, there is a place for private networks. Yes, there is value, value in private networks. Yes, it was sit side by side with Wi-Fi and handle you know workloads that Wi-Fi is not necessarily good at. And there are places and locations and setups for which private wireless makes a lot more sense than Wi-Fi. But it is not the be all and all you know dominant thing that's gonna come in and take over all private connectivity in the enterprise. So I would say what I'm seeing across the board is uh, some level of rationalization and understanding that private wireless has its place, understanding that maybe the overall industry was overly bullish on private wireless initially. Um, there is still traction. So if you look at you know Nokia's uh, investment in private wireless, there's a line that sort of goes up and to the right, thankfully, right? But mm -hmm. it's not a hockey stick, like I think people were hoping, yeah. Uh, yeah. but it is steady. And we are seeing um, successful deployments of private wireless out there across multiple industries. Mm -hmm. Obviously, industry 4.0 type use cases, ports, transportation hubs. Certainly, it, it works well. High density environments, heavy metal complicated inf um, yeah. environments. It works better than Wi-Fi. Mm -hmm. And for coverage, it does do better. Five to six X inside on a per radio basis and about 10 to 11 X or even more out, outdoors. Okay. So it makes a lot of sense for those use cases. And so we have very specific ones um, that it makes sense. Spoke to a large retailer, spoke with John Deere, right? And the, the classic yeah. examples in there. Yeah. Uh, spoken with a couple of schools as well uh, that have deployed okay. it. And they're all quite happy with the deployments yeah. of private wireless. So yeah. it has a place. I think it will persist. It will it will be there. Um, I think what we've seen in the industry is a slowdown. So like we've seen announcements, right? Uh, Federated Wireless laid off 
uh, a bunch of people. Yeah. Um, I think Salona's finding some um, uh, hit, you know, not not necessarily getting into a little headwind. So it's, you know, struggling a little bit, right, in terms of deployment, yeah. but certainly still moving and still pushing forward. Yeah. Uh, Expedo had a change of CEO, right? So yeah. some of the private wireless hot companies are running into a little bit of friction, but yeah. they're still around. They're still driving forward. Dell HPE, certainly with this uh, acquisition of Ethernet, Man, still yeah. drives forward with private wireless. Yeah. AWS is still bullish. Microsoft is still bullish. Google is still bullish in private wireless. Yeah. Um, Ericsson has expanded its wireless, private wireless portfolio into the recent acquisition that, well, not recent now, but Crater Point. So mm-hmm. the Crater Point net, net cloud now has an easier go to market for enterprise private wireless. So yeah. I think we'll see continued deployment. We're not yeah. going to see the hockey stick, but it'll be up yeah. into the Right. So that's what we see. Yeah, that's interesting. Yeah. And then, of course, we can't forget that uh, Nokia has uh, announced they're going to be laying off 14,000 people. So, yeah. So the next couple of years, that's yeah. the, I mean, yeah, I think everyone's, so, you know, seeing economic challenges yeah. Um, coming. Um, yeah. So, yeah. yeah. Um, or at least market challenges, right? Yeah. And, and market, um, and market issues. Sure. Um, sure. So yeah, I, I, that and that's uh, you know well that's that's what I was telling everybody coming into this year. Well, you know, I do a lot of work with the end market customers, right? Yeah. I mean, yeah. And I work with a lot of the CTOs of the vendors that sell through directly into them, you know, and right. I I have a good view on what their perspective is on connectivity. Um, but I think, you know, it's interesting, a lot of the stuff that you're talking about and a lot of the moves, you know, this IT driven, hey, let's, let's kind of sassify, or, you know, sassify um, yeah. the, the access for f- um, 5G private networks. Mm-hmm. Uh, it has largely been like driven by this notion of let's make it as easy as Wi-Fi, whatever the hell that means. But I, I think that's one of the challenges. And it is interesting. I talked to a very large, um, uh, a very large uh, OEM, mm-hmm. uh, you know, Lenovo, uh, about mm-hmm. this because you know they don't really play in the private network spaces, but they have some very, actually, very what I consider a well thought out rationale for why they're not digging into that stuff. And so. Mm-hmm. In a, in a way, while somebody, some folks might say, well, how come you guys aren't playing in that either? Maybe the question is, well, why are you playing in it? Right. And do you really understand the state of the technology, whether it's open, o- open architectures for this, uh, for um, five, you know, private 5G or proprietary? Uh, do you understand the economics of it? Do you understand the state of the technology and the feature sets? And do you uh, understand the readiness of organizations and their level of understanding of the value of these networks in a differentiated way? And usually you'll find that what I found in interviews that I do, the answers are largely uh, no, or yeah. I didn't really think of it like that. Somebody right. told me that this is going to go ballistic. So we're buying, we're, we're, we're buying into this play, right? Yeah. So um, I don't know, something for folks to think about, because, you know, I, I do hear a lot about how um, somehow, just, you know, like software defined X, Y, Z and friggin a magma and all the stuff is going to allow you to shrink everything down into something that's just as easy to deploy and manage as Wi-Fi. But, uh, you know, um, I think that's uh, that, uh, that in my what I've seen so far that's probably not a really good um, perspective to hold or a strategy. Yeah, well, we're not there yet. I think yeah. the reality is, you know, for the vast majority of the products out there, it's, it's still a lot more complicated than Wi-Fi. Oh, yeah, it's yeah. It's a lot more expensive than Wi-Fi. We've done the numbers and the calculations yeah. on the ROI. And without a clear, it's not a apples to apples comparison in terms of coverage. You can't do that. The yeah. ROI has to be, has to be built based on some business problem that 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 you have. For instance, downtime or loss of connectivity is costing you know a million a year or two million a year because yeah. of the Wi-Fi network crapping out or the quality of service not being what it is. That has to be factored into the equation to get a positive ROI. That's what we're seeing yeah. across yeah. many cases. And so it 
it, it's very special situations right now that will oh. require it. It will take time. And I think that's what we're seeing. Some of the more successful ones are the more fully managed end-to-end services. Some of the more successful ones are those with global SI stepping in for a specific vertical use case. And yeah, it's yeah, part yeah, of the yeah, overall yeah. solution, right? Yeah. So you're right. I'm not going yeah. in and just selling Wi-Fi APs. Yeah. It's not the same situation, right? I'm yeah, going yeah, and yeah. selling a business yeah. solution yeah. of which I require private 4G LTE or 5G yeah. as part of the solution, right? Yeah. That's yeah. the reality. Yeah. But yeah, yeah, no, everyone needs to be careful about the approach. Let yeah. me, again, you yeah. want to make sure it's the right bandwagon before you jump on it, right? Not, yeah. not just yeah. the... Yeah. And yeah, interestingly enough, when you do go into the verticals, though, they have a lot of other, let's say, non-cellular options that they're looking at, you know, mm-hmm. and then there's always wired sometimes. Yeah, I mean, sometimes you can't get away from wired um, and in some situations um, that that's the right answer. In some situations, private 5G or 4G LTE can actually supplant mm-hmm. the wired network because um, what you're looking for was actually just reliable connectivity and the 4G LTE can give yeah. you that that SLA for co- connectivity because you weren't driving that much bandwidth anyway yeah. with the connectivity yeah. issue. So yeah. again, it's a case by case basis, but yeah. Um, yeah. we're learning the cases. We're learning yeah. the cases. It'll take yeah. a little bit, of time, but yeah. Yeah, and the other thing I'm hearing a lot more of, and you know, it's some, a, a point that I brought up at 5G America's uh, a few of the roundtables is that you know everyone you well, continues to talk about latency, but that actually for private networks means a lot less um, yeah, yeah. Uh, for industrial uh, for a lot of these industry verticals reliability. That's is correct. More important. That's and correct. It, it doesn't necessarily need, mean that it has to be like, you know, you're in the sub 20 millisecond range. You know, it's like, do That's I correct. have a That's reliable correct. connection? That's and, correct. Um, so when you think about URLC, it's to you, you know, the ultra reliable part that's actually more important than. That's- you know low the latency. low latency and right. you know uh and it also factors in actually into the rationale as why you would deploy uh you know uh edge infrastructure compute infrastructure uh, on prem or what have you right um is that you want to be able to control that that uh network environment and not expose it to the you know uh, you know, networks that are going to, let's say the internet where you can't, it, it's all, um, you know, best effort. And, and that's the funny thing is everyone's talking about, well, you know, uh, 5G is about, you know, getting beyond best effort. Well, it's like, you're going to do that on a private network, you know, yeah. um, are you going to yep. do that on a macro network? Um, maybe, but why? Yeah, I mean, the reality is not for some time, right? So there are use cases for which the early network slicing out there uh, are viable you know, from a reliability coverage uh, bandwidth protection standpoint in broadcasting, right? We've seen yeah. that already being used. So for broadcasting, the slice works. For yeah. isolation, yeah. potentially, I'm still not convinced yet, but T-Mobile's you know, slicing for their SASE. enterprise SASE, right? So yeah. maybe, I don't know yet, but... But look, you're sharing the slice with all the other enterprises on the SaaS offering. So, okay, well, yeah. but, you know, it's not consumer, YouTube, TikTok traffic. Okay, sure. It's enterprise TikTok traffic, you know, yeah, wrapped yeah, in the yeah. encrypted tunnel. Yeah. But but we'll see. Um, but but yeah, I think it, it's these things are just going to take time, right? And you, you are right. I mean, look, here, if I have an in, in industrial application and I want more reliability, I need it up, I, you know, despite what happens on the internet, then it's going to be some kind of private 4G LTE, 5G infrastructure. I'm going to have edge computing or, you know, computers on site that can run the computing capabilities with, you know, a backup link to the internet for backup, you know, for additional services. And that's what we're seeing. It's it's a recreation of the existing computing infrastructure that already in, it, it exists in many enterprise sites. And we're moving it to cloud type architecture, more modern architecture, but it's still a closed environment for the most part, right? It's got more than, you know, cloud type infrastructure. So you can use all your tools and DevOps and CI, CD, but it's your infrastructure for the most part, connectivity and computing and storage local, right? That's what it's called. I mean, we call it cool things like edge computing, right? But but it's just computer room on site that, that you know, gives you compute, right? So, um, but, but yeah, anyway.
but yeah yep that's what we're seeing but yeah yeah, yeah. any any other final points or observations or takes no i think you know i would say you know having been to sort of the dtw uh fuse ah you got to tell me about dtw but we we're running out of time here no no no, no. but yeah, <laughs> I mean, yeah, i'm happy to go in there that's a whole different you know uh, yeah that's but, a different but fundamentally you know i think you know cloud infrastructure makes sense um flexibility agility is what we're seeing open is not free <laughs> you know yeah. disagree disaggregated requires reaggregation and orchestration and i think the telcos are realizing it i think enterprises looking at telco technologies you know are realizing it um but there is there is value there is traction it's yeah. just not going to go as quickly as i think you know a lot of us had hoped originally um but but you know what we're all learning and yeah. um it's getting there the telcos are cloudifying themselves one step at a time it's happening it's yeah. just one step at a time right it's yeah. not 10 steps it's one yeah. step yeah. And you know, um, not going as fast as um, expected. Um, it should be the operator's expectation. That's. that's I, I mean, I keep right. saying this because I've been saying it for so long. I'm just <laughs> emphasizing because it's like, it's like, especially the vendors don't listen. It's like, no, it's not about you guys. It's about. Yeah. Them. And if you don't, yeah. if you don't tune into what's important to them. You don't tune into where their mindset is in terms of adoption of open principles, then you know you're gonna sell into nothing. And then the whole multi-vendor stuff. Yeah. If you wanna if you wanna take on the cost of that and maybe get beat out every single time because you have to you have to hide the cost of integration, then yeah, play that game. You know, I mean Squid games, folks, that's what it is all about. You know, how do you play the game? And, um, you know, there's a, there's a lot of folks that are falling off the, the bridge or getting shot or whatever <laughs> happens yeah. in that show, you yeah, know, all yeah. that whichever crazy way, stuff whichever way you happens get killed, in the yeah. show. Yeah. yeah. Whichever so, way you get killed. but, yeah. um, yeah, no, it, Hey, uh, I, hopefully I'll go next year. If I, if I don't have like a good job, I mean, complex. <laughs> yeah, well, you, you always tell 5G Americas and Chris, which is what I had to tell them, like, sorry, Chris, you know, I have to be at the other one. Right. But it's okay. I mean, we'll swap places. You can go to Madrid. I'll go to Dallas. Okay. Next That's year. not a good deal, is it? No. Anyways. No, no I'd rather <laughs> uh, Madrid is awesome, man. I, I'll take that over Dallas any day. Yeah. No, now I better watch out when I go to Texas next time. <laughs> hey, we heard what you said. I know. They got your, they, they have yeah, your phone. They got my name now. Yeah. I know. I know. Yeah. <laughs> so, hey, um, Roy, it's great catching up, man. Always a pleasure. Uh, yeah. It's, a it's been way. We got to do this more often. Um, yeah. And, and so, yeah, cause I, I missed you at, uh, 5G, uh, what is it? Not only 5G Americas, but MWC, MWC. Las Vegas. Yeah. Yeah. I was well, another place. I know too many shows, man. We got to force them to consolidate and have just one track of shows so that we can actually be present and not. Yeah. Well, you might get your wish. Some of them are getting so small that they have to consolidate in order to have, <laughs> you know, enough people. To I know. I, I feel bad for them. I do. And I, I do. But I think, uh, yeah. yeah. Well, yeah. we'll see. Um, next next year, I think it's, it's going to be about industrial, you know, trying to figure out how to drive some of these industrial value cases. I mean, they think that it's, they still think it's use cases, but we can figure out oh, how are we going to get people in enterprises actually interested in talking about 5G, you know? So, um, but hey, Roy, um, thanks, man. Um, You're really very welcome. Always up. a pleasure, Leonard. Always yeah, a pleasure. And um, always fun. And it's always a very insightful conversation. I'm sure when we're going to listen back, we're going to learn a lot from each other. I always do. So yeah, likewise, likewise, Leonard. Always a pleasure. Yeah. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. Yeah. And so thanks everyone for tuning in. You know what? You can, uh, you can reach out to Roy and, uh, connect with AvidThink at www.avidthink.com and connect with him on LinkedIn. You know, he's like a friggin' celebrity. So he's all over the place. Uh, and, I don't know about that, but uh, yeah. 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 And, uh, <laughs> oddly, I don't bump into him as often as I statistically probably should. Too many shows, <laughs> too many shows Leonard. That's a sign. It's too many shows. Right? Yeah. 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 And then remember to subscribe to the Next Curve YouTube channel. The easiest thing to do is subscribe to our research portal and media center at www.next-curve. 
nextcurve.com. It's a great one-stop shop for all things Next Curve. And you'll be notified when we put, uh, you know, publish new articles and content like this webcast here. And uh, make sure to also subscribe to our newsletter on LinkedIn. Just go to my profile. You'll see it there. Subscribe and join the other 20, almost 28,000 excellent subscribers who Very are nice. yeah uh that are getting the tech and industry insights that matter so we will see you next time roy so Dennis, good to be back man i'll see you i'll see you in person soon soon <laughs> soon. soon okay where <laughs> soon. 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 all right take care man let's see you bye